So this Insta lecture is about uh, a, one common confusion alert is that oral hairy leukoplakia versus oral leukoplakia versus oral proliferative verrucous leukoplakia versus oral erythroplakia OE. So these are the four commonly confused terms are there. Oral leukoplakia, oral proliferative verrucous leukoplakia, oral erythroleukoplakia and oral hair leukoplakia. So when you're looking at this uh, commonly confused four terms, the first thing is to uh, rule out the one which is odd. The odd means that out of these four, among these four only one is usually not considered a pre-malignant lesion or potentially malignant lesion. And that one is oral hairy leukoplakia, OHL. Uh, it's typically seen in, in immunosuppressed patients like AIDS patient and associated with Epstein-Barr virus. And oral hairy leukoplakia, which is typically seen in immunosuppressed in the lateral side of tongue, it is not considered a pre-malignant lesion. So we can rule out this one first or uh, exclude this first among the four I discussed, which is commonly confused. So now three remains. One is uh, oral leukoplakia, oral proliferative verrucous leukoplakia, and the oral erythroplakia. I start with oral leukoplakia. So leuco means white, leukocyte means white blood cell, uh, leukuria means white is discharged. So similarly, leukoplakia means a white patch, which is typically seen in the oral mucosa. And it is considered a uh, oral potentially malignant disorder. It is considered a pre-malignant lesion. And it's quite common actually, particularly common in the smokers and among alcoholics. Now, what is the risk of this, this oral leukoplakia that you need to do a biopsy and you need to check for presence of dysplasia. And the risk is that, that this oral leukoplakia could turn into eventually, there's a possibility into squamous cell carcinoma of the oral cavity. Particularly what kind of uh, squamous cell carcinoma of oral cavity because there are two kinds of squamous cell carcinoma of oral cavities there. One is called keratinizing, another is called non-keratinizing. The one which is associated with uh, oral leukoplakia is the keratinizing small cell carcinoma which is usually not associated with the human papilloma virus. If you read about oral cavity squamous cell carcinoma, you'll be getting that there are two types. One is keratinizing and that is non-keratinizing. And non-keratinizing usually show basaloid cell clusters. And they non-keratinizing is associated with HPV, but they do not show a preceding erythroplakia or leukoplakia. But the keratinizing variant, they usually show leukoplakia. So the point I'm trying to emphasize is this, that oral leukoplakia can eventually turn into the keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma. That's the point. Now comes the oral proliferative verrucous leukoplakia. Oral proliferative verrucous leukoplakia is a kind of uh, aggressive variant of the oral leukoplakia only. So this is a subtype of oral leukoplakia and that carries even a higher risk of uh, malignant transformation, oral proliferative. They appear like warty verrucous appearance, they say. And if you look at the classification of an oral leukoplakia, there is called homogeneous and non-homogeneous. Homogeneous means the entire white patch they look quite same which cannot be scraped off and it, it, it's usually look entirely same homogeneous means you can think like a, fu a fruit bowl where entirely it is filled with let's say apple that is entirely the fruit bowl looking same but if that fr uh, fruit bowl is uh, there are some oranges some apples some other fruits then what would happen that it would look like a mixed non-homogeneous apple so some area of the patch may look different from the other that is the idea of the non-homogeneous. Now, oral proliferative verrucous leukoplakia, OVVL, which is a subtype of oral leukoplakia, it's a example of non-homogeneous leukoplakia because the entire leukoplakia does not look like same. Now, I come to the last one, that is the erythroplakia. Erythro means reddish, so usually that area appears reddish velvety appearance. Instead of whitish in appearance in the oral leukoplakia, it appears reddish. And it is also a pre-malignant lesion. It is actually considered by some as the, it carries the highest risk of malignant transformation among all the oral potentially malignant disorders. Uh, this oral erythroplakia, erythro means red as I mentioned, red is appearance. And oral erythro leukoplakia also you need to, that carries the same kind of risk factors that is smokers and also the alcoholics. It can also be associated with HPV, human papilloma virus. And you also need to check for dysplasia and the biopsy because as I mentioned, uh, it carries a very, very high risk for malignant transformation. That is the oral cavity squamous cell carcinoma. 
and sometimes the uh, lesion can have features of both erythroplakia and leukoplakia which is called speckled erythroleukoplakia because i know the term is there for sometimes so in a nutshell the point is that that uh, these uh, these are the patches which usually appears whitish or reddish so there are four terms are there one is oral leukoplakia oral hairy leukoplakia oral proliferative verrucous leukoplakia and erythroplakia oral erythroplakia you need to first rule out oral hairy leukoplakia which is seen in immunosuppressed aids in the lateral side of the tongue associated with epstein-barr virus that is not considered uh, pre malignant the other three is considered pre malignant or oral potentially malignant disorder in the current term they use opmd oral leukoplakia and oral proliferative verrucous leukoplakia is a kind of oral leukoplakia where there is a white patch on the oral mucosa cannot be scraped off other possibilities of white patches need to be excluded like oral candidiasis oral hairy leukoplakia and uh, the point is that both of them they are pre malignant oral leukoplakia and oral proliferative verrucous leukoplakia oral proliferative verrucous leukoplakia is just a aggressive variant of the oral leukoplakia another one if it is appearing red velvety appearance on the patches it's called erythroplakia erythroplakia even carries a higher risk for malignant transformation so that is the whole concept in the nutshell that's all from me thank you so much